So Sony's got a brand new wide angle lens, the 20mm f1.8G, and I love it. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I laugh a laugh and cry a cry, but I'm always nerdy. Don't know why. All right, quick disclosure. Sony sent me this pre-production lens to test, but I have to send it back when I'm done with my review. I haven't been compensated, and Sony is not reviewing this video before I post it. So the first thing I noticed when I got this lens was how similar it is to the 24 millimeter G Master when it comes to looks and feel, which is a great state to be in since this 24 millimeter lens is outstanding, and yet this new 20 millimeter lens is actually $500 less. Now it likely has to do with the fact that this lens is not a G Master and is an f1.8 instead of the 1.4 on the 24 millimeter. But in terms of build quality, you're getting a great value since it's basically a G Master chassis with the weather sealing, AF switch, function button, and even the declickable aperture ring. It even features the XD linear focus motor similar to the ones we've seen in Sony's amazing 400mm 2.8. This means you're going to get fast, quiet, and reliable autofocus performance for both photo and video. In fact, we took this lens with us to New York last week and challenged ourselves to use only it as our walk around travel lens. It took some getting used to at first, but I quickly came to enjoy the balance it offered between field of view and distortion control. But that distortion correction isn't based solely on lens profiles and post processing. They do help a bit, but even if you turn off distortion compensation in the camera, you'll be surprised with how well this lens compensates for field curvature while maintaining corner to corner sharpness. Now that sharpness definitely improves when you stop down a bit. Here's a brick wall comparison between f1.8 and f2.8 with corrections turned off. At 1.8 you can see some noticeable vignetting and the overall image is a bit softer, but it's pretty consistent across the frame and has a smooth character. But by just 2.8 it becomes impressively sharp for such a wide lens and the vignetting is gone and our corners are quite strong. Now a lens like this won't stand a chance against a refined telephoto lens if sharpness is all you care about. My 90mm macro, for example, creates much sharper lines. But what this lens does do well is create a nice balance between detail and character. In fact, in my opinion, it gracefully walks the line between an almost vintage lens aesthetic while taking a modern approach to error correction. You get these very pleasing out of focus areas with really smooth transitions, but with minimal chromatic aberration and distortion. It preserves so much detail without looking impossibly sharp, something that's not as common these days in photographic lenses. It's got a nine bladed circular aperture, which produces very smooth and round bokeh, even in the corners. Flare is also well controlled. It's able to maintain contrast even against a breaching sun with minimal color abnormalities. And in these regards, it compares extremely well with the 24mm G Master, which is a best in class lens. When comparing side by side images of the 20 and 24, both at f1.8, I find it very difficult to tell the difference, save for the G Master's slightly better edge sharpness. But it also carries with it some of the things I dislike about the 24mm, which is mainly regarding manual focusing. To the positive, this lens continues the trend of longer linear focus throws on Sony lenses, just like the 35 1.8. It's completely linear in its response when manually focusing, and has a decent focus throw of about 160 degrees. However, it breathes quite heavily. The same complaint I have with the 24mm, which is a step back from the 35 1.8, which hardly breathed at all. Now some of this is attributable to the fact that this lens has an impressive close focusing distance of just 0.63 feet or 0.19 meters, so when you're pulling focus between objects that are more reasonably distanced, you won't see the breathing as badly as when you go from ultra close focusing to infinity. But that also illustrates another drawback with this lens, which is that it's hard to nail focus manually, because that 160 degrees I mentioned earlier covers such a deep range that even the slightest turn will move your focus frustratingly far. So these limitations definitely signal that this lens is better suited for autofocus applications like most photography, vlogging, etc. I also think it would work quite well for a video shoot with a static subject like this, where breathing isn't a problem, but you want autofocus you can count on. And I definitely have confidence in this lens's autofocus capabilities. While reviewing the New York images in Lightroom, I noticed there wasn't a single missed focus, and I even did a little vlog test in harsh lighting, and it didn't hesitate for a second. Again, if it uses similar tech to the 400mm, you know autofocus won't be a problem. And speaking of logging, I think you'll find this 20mm nicely brings in more of the environment without adding too much of that super wide face stretching effect. And I could totally see this being some people's new favorite vlogging lens, especially considering how well it balances on the full frame bodies. It's 373 grams or 0.82 pounds, so just slightly smaller and lighter than the 24mm, but it feels really good in the hand. And for me, this is the perfect size lens for the a7 III, which was the main complaint that I had with the recent 35 1.8. I felt like this lens was a bit too compact and a bit too short for my large hands, and I didn't like the front filter diameter, but the 20mm is back to the more common 67mm thread, which I appreciate. Overall, this might just be my new favorite travel lens. It's perfect for shooting architecture, has great character, and lets you quickly jump into vlog mode without switching lenses. 
For real estate, I could see some people making the argument that it's not quite wide enough and would instead prefer a 16 millimeter variant, but I often find that 16 millimeter produces a look that's a bit too obviously exaggerated in small spaces, where the 20 millimeter created very natural, more honestly spacious images of our tiny New York hotel room. Ultimately, I really like this lens. Outside of the manual focusing limitations and focus breathing, it's pretty much exactly what I wanted the 35 1.8 to be. Don't get me wrong, the 35 1.8 is a great lens and it's still my go-to 35 millimeter on Sony, but this 20 millimeter just feels a lot more premium without adding too much to the price and offering arguably a better value at 899 US dollars. The 24 millimeter G Master is still the slightly better lens, but at a nearly 40% discount, the 20 millimeter is a strong rival. If you don't need the f1.4 aperture and are content with a focal lens, because these are the types of lenses I like the most, the ones where you save 40% of the price over the top tier, but get 95% of the quality. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining, or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, then why are you still watching this? Alright, I'm done.